Shabbat Shalom, and we welcome you to Temple Oheb Shalom here again in the Lehrman Chapel. I'm joined by our organist and musical director, Christopher Prestia, as we are preparing to do our weekly video to bring Shabbat into your homes. So let's begin by taking a cleansing breath. Wonderful, and we'll welcome Shabbat by lighting our Shabbat candles. Please turn to page 121. As these candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us, as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Tam 
silent reflection. Yeah. 
Genesis, Vayechi. And this is the portion where Jacob breathes his last and gives his blessing to Joseph, his son Joseph, and Joseph's sons Ephraim and Manasseh. And later on, at the very end of the Torah portion, Joseph himself breathes his last, and the book of Genesis is ended. Next week, we meet Moses, and next week we find Moses in the basket and begin the um, all-encompassing story of the life of Moses and the exodus from Egypt. But for now, let's hear the blessing of Jacob. Let's do the blessing before the Torah together. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamborach, Baruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Ba'ed, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Baru Mikol HaAmin, Venatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah. Ve'yehi ha'chare ha'dvarim, ve'ha'ele ve'yomer le'yosef, hine avicha chola. And after these things, one said, we're not sure who the one was, but one said to Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. Ve'yikach et shnei benav imo et Manasseh ve'et Ephraim. And Joseph went to see his father with his sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. V'yigal Yaakov v'yomer, hine b'cha Yosef ba'elav. And one said to Jacob, Behold, your son Joseph has come. V'yitchaze Yisrael v'yashev al hameta. And Israel, not the state or the people, remember Jacob is also known as Israel. Here he is called Israel. And Israel gathered his strength and rose up onto his bed, or sat up on his bed. Yomer Yaakov el Yosef. And he said to Joseph, El Shaddai Nira Elav Beluz Ba'aretz Kana'an. And the um, Eternal One, El Shaddai, is a very powerful um, name for God, appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, v'yevarech oti, and he blessed me. V'yomer ilav, hineni mafricha v'halachta v'natata dekoach imcha. And he said, I will bless you and make you a people among peoples. Benatati et ha'aretz hazot, and I will give this land to you. Lezarcha v'arecha echaza olam, and I will leave it to your seed, to the next generation, um, as a gift for eternity. Blessing after the Torah. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher natan lanu Torah temet vechaye olam nata betochenu baruch ata Adonai noten ha Torah. And now, in the presence of the Torah scroll, we hear the stirring refrain of the Mishabera. Thank you. 
also ask God's blessings on the caregivers in our midst, those who are on the front line of the COVID crisis, and we ask God's blessings on those who are working hard to give the vaccines to everyone who is in need as quickly as possible. We say, Baruch Ata Adonai Rofeha Cholim. We praise you, Adonai, our God, who heals the sick, and we all say, Amen. We continue now with Hodo al Eretz as we return the Torah to the earth. What would be different? What hasn't changed? 
We are constantly growing and evolving, and our values do change over time. What may have been important for us to pass on to the next generation when we were 40 may have changed drastically when we reached the age of 80, especially when we realize how precarious our world actually is. I think it's very important to begin writing down our ethical wills and revising them regularly. Writing them down focuses us to distill life into its most important aspects, and revising it forces us to revisit and refine our guiding principles. Some ethical wills and some ethical values remain universal. Others may be more personal. Feeding the hungry is universal, but reminding our children of the importance of funding the need to cure a disease that affects our own families makes an ethical will more personal. An ethical will written in the 60s may echo the hopes for racial equality, while one written in the 70s may have focused on the environment. An ethical will written in the 80s may speak of the need to cure AIDS, while one written today may focus on the need to help those who lost their livelihood due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As you begin to write your ethical will, remember how this practice facilitates personal and spiritual growth in a concrete, measurable way. It not only is a call to leave our values to the next generation, it is also a call to constantly reevaluate what is important to us as we evolve as righteous people. Our patriarch Jacob made his wishes well known as his life ended in this week's Torah portion. It is important for us to leave an ethical roadmap for the next generation as well. And as the road ahead is mostly unknown, the act of writing our values down on paper helps us to facilitate more meaningful lives as we live them, and as they change, and as we grow. Shabbat Shalom. We now continue with Aleinu on page 586. Shemaya, 
Chayimaleinu ve'alko Yisrael bimaru amen, oseh shalom bimroma, u'yaseh shalom. Aleinu ve'alko Yisrael bimaru amen, may the source of peace send peace to all of us who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved, and we say, Amen. Let's close with Adon Olam. It's found on page 625. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom.